Hello everybody, Alice Motion here, and welcome to Tips and Tricks for Your LEGO Minecraft World, Part 2. The first thing I'd recommend for creating a new LEGO Minecraft world is try to avoid making your area look flat and very plain. Try to add as much detail in, as possible into your area rather than having a bunch of flat giant base plates. This is something I've done a lot in my older mocks and is something I'm trying my best to improve on. It just makes it look a lot better. I think it would be a lot nicer if you had a nicely detailed biome with different things. You can use flowers, dead shrubs, cactus, trees, anything just to add more detail. Try to add tiny little hills as well into your biome just to avoid making it look flat and plain definitely will look a lot better and I think it'll be something that a lot of other people would like to see. Part number two is the way you display your figures. Believe it or not, this actually really affects the way your LEGO Minecraft world looks. I prefer to use less LEGO figures just because it makes it look a lot less crowded. The more figures you use, the more messy it'll look and the less appealing it'll look when you're looking at your build. The more figures you have, the more it hides the different little builds you have in the world. But they also work well to fill up plain areas and also just kind of display different sections of the world just to add character to the build, just to kind of let people know what is going on in the build as well. I actually try to avoid using characters like spiders or endermen. They're just larger figures and can take up a lot more space and just make things look a little bit messier. But you guys can do whatever you like with those figures. I just try my best to avoid using them. So with figures, just try to make sure they're not too close together. Try to space them apart as much as you can. Try to have them kind of doing different things in different areas of the display. For example, having some characters in a mine, kind of just mining some ores. Some figures maybe trading with some villagers or characters kind of sitting in their Minecraft house. Just have them kind of doing some things around the world really makes it look nice and just gives it a lot more life to the build. And it works out very nice for making your build just look a whole lot better. And just a lot nicer than just having too many figures or no figures at all. Number three is the way you blend your LEGO Minecraft biomes together. This is actually a very important part for your LEGO Minecraft world. If you don't blend them correctly, it just starts looking very messy and just doesn't look that good. But if you blend them together very nicely, it adds a lot more detail to the biome. For example, when going to a lake build, instead of having a flat row of sand, Try to make it look bumpy, try to make it look as natural as you can. It'll just look a lot more realistic and it'll look a lot better. And it's a lot better having something like this rather than having something like this. Number four is the size of the build. While building your LEGO Minecraft world, keep in mind the size actually doesn't really matter. It is better to have a more detailed smaller display than a larger less detailed display. I choose to make my displays decently small compared to other LEGO Minecraft worlds from other people because I have a smaller collection of parts and I would rather have a lot more of a detailed build rather than having a big build that's a little less detailed. Just keep in mind that detail is a little more important than size. Your LEGO Minecraft world could be as small as two 32 by 32 base plates or even just the size of one 32 by 32 base plate. So while building your world, just keep in mind size is after detail. Detail always goes first. It's always gonna make your display look a lot better rather than having a giant, huge, plain build. Number five is the use of official LEGO Minecraft sets. Personally, when I make my LEGO Minecraft worlds, I try to avoid using the official sets as much as I can, just because I like to keep the builds original if I can. I think it looks a lot better, and I think it works a little bit better doing that. But if you're adding official builds to your display, make sure the builds look nice and accurate. Make sure they fit into the build very nicely, and it's not too crowded. You want to use too many official sets to the point where it's getting really crowded. You can't really have any of your own custom stuff in there. So I'd recommend just do your own custom builds if you can and then do official sets. But official sets really work well if you want to add them to your LEGO Minecraft world. And if you are choosing to use official builds, I recommend trying to use sets that are easier to integrate with your own custom builds. For example, sets that are a lot flatter and closed off on all sides. Sets like the mine would not be that easy to add into your mocks, but other sets like the first night or the mountain cave would be a lot better to add if you are trying to use official sets for your own mock. Number six is observe in-game Minecraft generation. If you're stuck trying to figure out what you want to build for your LEGO Minecraft world, or you don't really know how to build a display that looks accurate to the game, just log on to Minecraft, just explore a new world in creative mode, just try to find different areas in the world and try to kind of recreate them in LEGO, take screenshots or just stay in the world and just try to get a general idea of what a Minecraft world looks like. It really helps with me when I'm trying to make my own displays. It just helps me get a nice natural look for what these structures really look like and it works really well. Just overall making the build look a lot better in the end. So looking at our builds in the real game actually really really helps. Number seven is the types of parts you use for your build. While building your LEGO Minecraft world, try your hardest to stick with using accurate looking pieces. So stay with the 2x2 two two sized pieces if you can. They just look the most accurate to the real life Minecraft blocks. It'll look a lot better in the end. Just try to avoid pieces like slopes and rounded parts. They definitely won't look good in the end. It will look a little bit more messy. So stick with more accurate looking pieces. Sometimes I'll actually allow myself to use one by pieces if it works for certain builds just to make them look a little bit smaller. 
but as long as you're not using round or sloped pieces, your LEGO Minecraft world will look good in the end. And for number eight is to avoid crowded areas. This is something that you're really gonna want to avoid for your LEGO Minecraft world if you want it to look nice and clean and natural. This is something I really failed try at to keep doing your buildings in a lot of nice and far videos. apart. Try to keep some empty space between the buildings. This is something that a lot of people do not do while building the LEGO Minecraft worlds. The builds end up just looking super crowded. It's nice to have blank spaces instead of building after building after building. Just having buildings super close together just does not look too appealing. And it's definitely something you want to avoid doing. And also save you a lot of parts as well, which is also a really good thing. But I think that's about it for the tips and tricks video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Did I do a good job at kind of giving some useful tips to you guys for building your next LEGO Minecraft world? And there's anything else that I need to add for another future video. But that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and destroy all those LEGO Hoglins because they're not good.